Yeah. Right there. Yep. And then slide towards the center of the cockpit. Now lift up on the handle and you can slide forward to wherever is optimal for you to see your flight instruments. Right. Which is a big selling point from a pilot's perspective as well as from the owner's perspective. You know where they hang on back there. Sure. <laughs> well, safety is the <coughs> primary benefit of the 7X over and above our competitors in the form of the digital primary flight control system, or fly-by-wire as it's more commonly known. So fly-by-wire provides handling characteristics and safety features that exceed our competition and set a new standard within the industry. So you may wonder then, what is fly-by-wire? Well, in a conventionally controlled aircraft, we have a control wheel that's connected to control rods that attach to flight control servo, servo actuators that position the flight control surfaces. With fly-by-wire, we make inputs in this instance with a side stick controller that communicates with six flight control computers that gather other information from our air data system, uh, from our initial reference units, and so on, and combines that information and sends instructions to our flight control surfaces, which are positioned, and then through a feedback relationship, ensure that we, the aircraft is responding exactly as we've commanded it. So we incorporate levels of stability in fly-by-wire that don't exist in a conventionally controlled aircraft, namely our flight path. So vertically and also laterally, as far as roll inputs are concerned, when you make an input on the side stick controller, let's say we're in level flight, and I command a bank angle up to 35 degrees. If I release the side stick, it will maintain that flight path and will maintain that back bank angle without oh, wow. any input, additional input from me and without any additional attention from me. So I simply make the input, produce the desired result, release the side stick, and it preserves what I've instructed the aircraft to do. Instead of drifting back. So let's translate this into a circling approach at night where we fly overhead the field and we have to make a continuous turning descent towards the runway. Well, I need to be focused not only on flying the aircraft, but my position relative to the airport and the runway. I can enter a safe three degree descent path, enter a safe up to 30 degree, let's say, bank angle, and release the side stick as I keep the airport in sight and the runway in sight, and not have to continuously return to monitor and ensure that the aircraft has maintained that path and bank angle. So it provides a predictability in the response of the aircraft that's very helpful to me as a pilot. And that those same inputs produce the same results regardless of my altitude or airspeed. So if I'm flying at flight level 410 and Mach 0.85, our normal cruise speed, which is quite fast, and I make a control input, I get the same result as I will when I'm in the traffic pattern at 150 knots with my flaps down and my gear down. So that's one superb advantage that's afforded by fly-by-wire. But we also incorporate some wonderful safety features that don't exist in non-fly-by-wire aircraft. In fly-by-wire, no matter what I do with the side stick or the throttles or uh, flaps and slats, I can't over-pitch the aircraft. I can't overload the aircraft structurally. We said over pitch in terms of it inducing a stall? Actually, we have pitch limits. So in the high speed realm, I cannot exceed 35 degrees in no nose up pitch nor minus 28 degrees in nose down pitch. It's related to speed so that if I slow the aircraft, those pitch limits become 25 degrees and minus 18 degrees at 100 knots. So there are limits as to the attitude that I can command the aircraft in normal laws, where our flight control computers are affording us this protection. I can't structurally overstress the aircraft. So if I look out the window and something is, another aircraft is coming at me that I was unaware of, and I grab this side stick controller and I pull it back all the way, or I push it forward all the way, I won't structurally overstress the aircraft. It will give me the maximum performance without ex exceeding the structural integrity of the aircraft. Well, it's kind of 
kind of like traction control for a via, uh, automobile. Yeah, that would be way, one yeah. way to think of it. It's giving yeah. you that maximum performance right up to the limits of your flight envelope without ever exceeding flight en envelopes. So, for example, in the high speed mm -hmm. realm, if I were to advance the throttles to maximum takeoff go around power and push as hard as I could on the sides of the controller and begin to accelerate very rapidly, when I exceeded the maximum operating speed or Mach, if I run a bank angle, it'll automatically level my wings and it'll begin to pitch the aircraft up so that I don't overspeed the aircraft. Oh, wow. In the slow speed realm, if I push the throttles all the way back to idle, I extend my air brakes for additional drag, uh, and I begin to pitch the nose up, which would be the way that in a conventionally controlled aircraft you might enter a stall. As soon as my angle of attack exceeds a certain limit, my slats for the outboard and middle panels on each wing extend automatically to provide me with an additional buffer above stall. If I exceed a higher angle of attack, my air brakes will automatically retract to reduce drag. But from the standpoint of the primary flight control system, it will not allow me to stall the aircraft. When I reach the maximum angle of attack that the aircraft can fly without stalling, it will automatically lower the nose and keep me just below the stall speed so the aircraft is completely controllable. So I can't overload it, I can't over pitch it, I can't over speed it, I can't stall it. Uh, technically, we can roll the aircraft, though it's not something that we do. Uh, but when we add to this the wonderful handling qualities that all of our Falcons are bred with, the aircraft is exceptionally agile, but also very stable. So for example, if I make the maximum lateral input on the side stick controller, I'll roll at a rate of 40 degrees per second, which is very rapid. So it takes but fingertip inputs to fly the airplane. Because the fly-by-wire system automatically trims the aircraft on all three axes, if I set a particular path, nose down or up, and I release the side stick, it will maintain that path. So once again, it doesn't require quite as much constant attention to control the aircraft. It's point and shoot. I put the aircraft in an attitude, I release the side stick, and it stays where I left it. What can he, I mean, outside of the obvious, you know, privileges of having a private aircraft, Sure. what does the Falcon 7X deliver that might be of interest to someone like that? So. I'm talking about things like obviously like comfort, sure. speed, so range. We've already talked about the safety of the aircraft, so that's paramount. So he's got the safest possible aircraft available. He's got extraordinary range. The aircraft has a range of 5,950 nautical miles. Uh, I've flown the aircraft uh, 12 hours and 25 minutes, uh, landing with very comfortable reserves. So he's got exceptional range. He's got a three-engine configuration, which provides levels of redundancy, again, for safety, as well as performance, because whenever we make a takeoff, we're always planning for the possibility of an engine failure. In a three-engine configuration, with the failure of an engine, he's lost but one-third of his thrust, whereas in a twin-engine aircraft, you've lost 50% of your thrust. Having those two engines operating with one inoperative means that I can carry a larger payload out of, let's say, a high-elevation airport like an Aspen which means that I have more range available to me on a uh, heavy gross weight, high altitude airport on a hot day. The aircraft is very fast. We have a completely new wing on this aircraft, 86 foot wingspan, more highly swept by five degrees than our other wings. And as a result, it's an aeroelastic wing that uh, provides a suspension effect that gives us a more comfortable ride through turbulence and permits that Mach 0.85, 85% of the speed of sound cruise speed in normal cruise. Our long range cruise is Mach 0.80, 80% of the speed of sound, which is what most aircraft cruise at. So we uh, typically cruise at higher speeds. As far as the cabin is concerned, it's less than a 52 decibel cabin, so it's extremely quiet on the back for work, for rest. Um, pressurization. Pressurization. The maximum cabin altitude in this aircraft is 6,000 feet, which would exist at a 51,000 foot maximum cert certified uh, operating altitude. Wow. Now, since we typically fly in the vicinity of the low 40s, low to mid 40s, the cabin altitude typically is in the vicinity of 4,000, just over 4,000 feet. Compared to so, typical commercial. Exactly, which is going to be much higher. So as a result, you're less fatigued at the end of a long flight. 
You can purchase an optional humidification system, which uh, means that you're not so dehydrated when you arrive. So the aircraft can fly in and out of short fields, can fly at high altitudes over a lot of the weather that other aircraft might have to deviate around, um, has exceptionally long range, great quiet and comfort, all of the high-tech features that you'd want available for connectivity, so we have uh, high-speed internet access, fax. satellite phone, fax, printing capability, and so on. So it's a mobile office. So we have some customers, for example, that choose to work productively after a full day at the office, have a nourishing meal, get a good night's sleep while flying all night long to some part of the world where they need to do business. There's a new optional shower that's available so they can be well rested, uh, clean and clean. refreshed, <laughs> well fed, have so completed their business, show up ready to do business. So in, in essence, these are wonderful business tools. It's a mobile office. It's a time machine in as much as it affords busy uh, executives, high net worth individuals, uh, the opportunity to remain productive while connecting any two points on the earth with a stop. Nice. Awesome. All right, let's take two.